Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I know I've made a tall tote before, but the last one was out of scaffold boards and this one's going to be out of pallet wood and do a slightly different design. So the first thing is to square up some material. I'm going to use my jig to rip down one side and then I can put it against the fence and get the other side parallel. I can then use the crosscut sled first to clean up the end and then cut all the pieces to the correct length. Set up a stop block on the mitre fence so that the bits that need to be the same length I can get all exactly the same. This is definitely much more accurate and quicker than drawing pencil lines on every piece. Last time I joined the tote together with some butt joints and then reinforcing the dowels so this time I'm going to use box joints and using this jig and a router to cut them. I find this quicker than the table saw and you get some nice chunky fingers. In soft woods like this I do find it leaves a few loose fibres so I give it all a sand down before getting it glued together. One of the advantages of the chunky fingers is it's easier to get the glue in the gaps. When doing it on a table saw if you've got something like a 2.8mm kerf it's very difficult to get the glue in. If you spend the time setting the machine up properly everything slides together pretty easily and you get a very strong joint but I also think it's a good looking joint as well. Time to get some clamps on. And while I'm doing this I get a square out and check that it's all square as I want to adjust it now before the glue dries. Another advantage of the box joints or finger joints is they do tend to pull everything nice and square. Whilst I waited for the glue to dry, I started work on the base of the box. For this I'm using slightly thinner material than the sides, I'd say it's about 10mm or 1cm thick and they're going to get glued together. To help keep them nice and flat while they glue up, I'm going to use the panel clamps I made last year. It's just slide over the end and then I can tighten up the star knobs keeping everything nice and level. I get one on either end of the base but what they don't do is pull the boards into each other to make a nice tight glue joint so I have to add some more clamps to apply pressure in the other direction. With this setup, the boards are kept tight together and level with each other. I left these for a few hours to set up and then they can be attached to the bottom of the boxes. I'm going to attach the base with some glue, so I'm just going to run a bead around the outside and then get the bottoms in place. Fire in a few brad nails to hold it in place while the glue dries. Right, so we made a box, but really it needs a carrying handle. So I'm going to cut down some of these floorboards to act as supports on the end for one. Again, I screw out one end and then cut them to length using the mitre sled and a stop block. I can then offer the piece up to the side and mark out the height that the end of the box is going to go to. I then mark in an equal distance from either side and then I can join up these dots, creating a taper. While I'm here, I also mark out and punch a centre for where the hole for the handle needs to go. I can use a falsener bit, which the point fits into that nice little hole I punched, and drill these out. With a hole drilled for each bit, I can take them over to the bandsaw and cut out those lines I marked. Both the finger joints and the base were slightly proud, so I gave everything a sand down and then I can look at attaching the ends. These are just going to get glued in place, so I get loads of glue in, put them in place, get them equal distance from both sides, and then I can get some clamps on and leave it all to dry. I 
I wanted to add some branding to this and I can use my new blowtorch for the first time. It makes heating this brand up so much quicker. I'm going to finish the totes in some dry wax and this is my favourite colour for a finish. It's not oak or walnut, it's just called medium brown. But I really like it and use it all the time. So I just brush it on, leave it for 10 minutes and then give it a good buff off. Right, it's going to need a handle. So these are 22mm holes I drilled in it and that's to accept some 22mm copper pipe. So I just mark out the length, leaving it a bit longer than the totes so I can actually get some end caps on later. Then I can cut some pipe down and some wooden dowel that fits exactly in the pipe. I guess it's 20mm, maybe 19 Anyway, it's a nice snug fit and this means we get the nice copper look of the handle but it'll also be nice and strong. To keep the handle in place I'm going to fit these copper end caps. They're designed to be soldered on but as this is not going to be holding any gas or water I'm just going to glue them on with some epoxy. I always find you need to put a clamp on or they will move. That's them all done. So the reason I revisited this project and made two of these is because I've hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube and I'm going to give these away. So tune in on Sunday for details. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.